Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a wrap up of some recent science fiction and fantasy books that I have read. I feel like when I start these videos I normally begin by apologizing and reassuring you all that I'm going to be back soon with more horror and thriller content and while that is still technically true, I decided today that I don't want to do that. I don't want to apologize for the fact that I really like science fiction and also fantasy has definitely grown on me. I am reading it a lot more regularly and you know what? I like these genres. I still I still love horror, I still love thrillers, but I tend to enjoy those genres more when I break up my reads with other genres. Go figure. So I'm here to talk about some science fiction and fantasy books that I love that I hope that you will love too. Hopefully you'll find some recommendations. And again, I'm not going to apologize for liking what I like and putting out the videos that I enjoy. Alright, let's get started. First, let's talk science fiction, and I was very excited to receive a review copy of Light Chaser by Peter F. Hamilton and Gareth Powell. And this is a novella set in a far-flung future following a young woman who is, well, perhaps not young anymore. So over the century, she travels alone on an individual spaceship where her only companion is a piece of artificial intelligence. This is such a wonderful story. It is full of really interesting ideas as well as some really heartfelt moments. I don't want to get too far into the plot because it is only a novella and I read it very quickly but it was just so smart, so well plotted and it really pulled at my heartstrings which I did not expect. There is a emotional element to this book and I just thought it came together so well. So if you're a fan of space opera do not be afraid of the fact that this is in a shorter format because there is amazing world building, there is amazing character development. I can't believe that such a powerful story was written into such a small package. I have read Gareth Powell before but I've never actually read Peter F. Hamilton and I'm very excited to read more of his work now. I'm thinking of going on to Pandora Star at some point even though it's really chunky but I think all of his books are really chunky except for this which is by the way a standalone so you can definitely read it regardless of having read his other work. So let me know if Pandora Star is where I should go from here but very impressed, highly recommend and yeah this is definitely a tender for my best of the year video so keep posted on that. Next I want to talk about Dawn by Octavia E. Butler and this is a book that follows a woman in a post-apocalyptic future. She wakes up knowing that her family is dead and does not know where she is, does not know how much time has passed and soon enough realizes that she is on some sort of alien spacecraft or something like that and the story goes from there as she slowly learns about the aliens and the mysteries around them are slowly revealed and it's definitely a book you want to go into without knowing too much of the plot so I'll stop there. This is actually a book that I read with my horror patron book club and of course every month we read a horror book but because July is my birthday month I also insisted that they go ahead and read a bonus book and this is the one that won the poll for science fiction and I will say that I was really excited to get to it because I've really liked Octavia E. Butler's previous work but I was a little bit let down by this one so I will say that I still continue to really like her prose. I think she is a very strong writer. Her writing is not overly flowery but it's just very pleasing to my senses or particular tastes as a reader. But the mystery itself I just found to be a little bit underwhelming. The aliens were actually really interesting. They're very foreign and very different than humans and it certainly gets dark. It almost gets a little bit steamy at times which I didn't expect but it was just not quite the tone of a story that I was expecting. It's just not quite what I was looking for and that's hard to explain. So I like this one but I didn't entirely love it. I would describe it as more anthropological science fiction because it's much more focused on the characters and the races of the aliens and getting to know how they are different from humans both biologically but also in terms of those cultural elements. So it was interesting but it never really hooked me in so at this time I have not continued on to finish out the rest of Lilith's Brood trilogy. Let me know if I should. Next I want to talk about Version Control by Dexter Palmer and this is a near future science fiction story that follows a couple. The wife works for this social media type company and her husband is this brilliant physicist who has just invented something that everyone calls a time travel machine but you know they keep getting mad and saying no that's not what it is. And this is a story where you know that there's something not quite right and this is from the very beginning it's very clear that there's something wrong 
but you don't know what that is. And I love that mystery. I really like a story where it's very clear that something is being held back from the reader and you have to puzzle out what is happening. To be clear, you definitely have an idea that it seems like it's involving this man's invention, but it doesn't really make sense. And the more that you learn about the invention, the less that it seems to be involved, but you think it should be. And again, you're just puzzling it out. So I really enjoyed the mystery of this one. The only thing that really held it back from being a favorite for me is the fact that this book basically reads like a contemporary, other than the fact that involves some slightly futuristic technology. For the most part, it reads like the modern day and was very focused on the relationships between the characters. There's a lot of talk about dating and social media and all of that. And it's just not a particular topic that I find overly interesting, but this definitely read like a very light version of a Black Mirror episode. So if you enjoyed that show, you might want to check out this one. And again, I love the mystery. I liked how it came together. It was a very long book, but generally I was very happy with it and I thought it was well worth my time. Next, I want to talk about Free Falling by Lois McMaster Bujell, and this is the start of a companion series that is quite popular. It's my first time reading anything by the author. This story follows a man who is brought to this corporate place to go and train the new workers, and he finds out that the workers that he is going to be training are not necessarily human or not technically. They are humanoids that have been bioengineered in order to work properly in a low gravity setting and so they are able to do their welding work in this situation. And so the book starts out with a lot of good conversations about whether these humanoids are actually people or are they property. And then soon enough into the story some technology is introduced that possibly makes them obsolete. And then this man has to decide what to do and how to react and decides to side with these humanoids and assist them in their fight not just to keep their jobs but also to possibly keep their lives and identities and I really enjoyed this book. It was surprising. I went in with very little expectations. I didn't really know much about it and I just love the honestly the human resources aspects of it because if you don't know I don't work in human resources but that's actually where my education comes from. That's what I took in university. And so getting to actually have conversations around hiring practices and again, the conversations of are they employees? Are they not? And if so, how do you treat them? And just compensation and all of that. I actually really love the HR moments to this book. Otherwise, once I got into the later half, it got a lot more action packed. I still enjoyed it, but definitely the parts that I really loved were all at the beginning when it was more focused on them as employees. So needless to say, I'm definitely interested to read more by this author, definitely interested to continue on in the series, which I know there's a time jump and it's the other books are very unrelated, but I'm very interested to keep going because I had a lot of fun with this one. Last for science fiction, I read Sphere by Michael Crichton, and this follows a man who is called in by the government to go and investigate a potential alien spacecraft or some kind of object that has been found at the bottom of the ocean. It is this foreign object they do not recognize, and they go down to see what is actually there, and what transpires is all spoilers, so I will stop with the synopsis there, but I'll let you know that I really enjoyed the beginning of this one. The mystery was really intriguing. Michael Crichton always brings in some good scientific discussions into his books and I was just fascinated. I had not seen the movie so no idea what was going to happen and my complaint with this book is that I didn't like where it went and I can't explain why without giving away spoilers which is so frustrating. It just wasn't what I expected from this one at all and it's just not my personal taste. So I like this one to a point and then it kind of lost me once things were revealed and you knew what was happening. But obviously Michael Crichton is very beloved so other people will feel differently. This one is quite popular so you just have to try it for yourself and see if you're satisfied with the twist or not. So I'll leave it there. Now switching over to fantasy, I read Lost Boy by Christina Henry which is a Peter Pan retelling and I picked up this one because I've loved Christina Henry's horror books and quite a few people recommended that I try this one. I don't normally like fairy tale retellings but because I enjoyed The Girl in Red I did 
did want to try out more of them. And while I really liked Girl in Red, this one was a little bit more so-so for me. There's a few reasons for that. One being the fact that I've never read the original classic Peter Pan story. I'm vaguely aware of the initial story and I felt I knew enough to go into this one, but I don't have any attachment to the story. I've never watched the movies and it's just the fact that I've never really cared to. I never really thought it was an interesting premise. And so I definitely think that my reading experience with this one suffered from the fact that I just don't really care about that narrative. I did hear that this book was going to be dark and if I'm honest I actually thought that it was going to be darker than it actually was even though it certainly went to some dark places but it was still lighter than I expected it to be. So overall, I'm happy I read it. I'm definitely still gonna continue on reading with Christina Henry's work, but I just don't think her retellings are gonna be all-time favorites of mine. I know she's also done Alice in Wonderland and very similar to Peter Pan, I don't have a lot of love for that story, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna rush off and try out those books. But convince me in the comments below, I'm always easily swayed. Next, I wanna talk about The Forever King by Ben Gailey. This is a book I received from the author for review. It's the beginning of a new series that has just come out, but it's actually tied to a previous series. However, you do not need to read that one in order to jump into this one, which was the case for me. It's my first time reading from the author. And this is set in a world where magic is banned, and in doing so it has actually created peace within the lands. However, there are still rebels that want to use magic, and so they are fighting against the ruling bodies. The story primarily follows a young woman who does not have a love for magic at all. However, she ends up getting pulled into a quest for revenge, and in so doing so, she ends up getting involved with the rebels, and the story goes from there. This is a book I was very excited to receive and review because I've really been enjoying epic fantasy lately. And I will say that this one was a solid piece of fantasy. It did follow a lot of the tropes, things that I've seen before, coming of age, you have different montages and so forth. And I really don't have a specific criticism of this book other than the fact that it's not anything I haven't seen before. I liked the characters to a degree, but I never got overly attached to them. Some of it could have been the fact that there were characters from the previous books, and because, again, I hadn't read those, I didn't have that nostalgia for them, but it also introduced new characters, and I just never really had a strong emotional connection to them. So I followed the story through. It's actually quite chunky and it is again the start of a series, but I just didn't find that something special that just makes me love a series. And a lot of it comes from the fact that while I do read a lot of fantasy, I'm always looking for something that's a little bit different, a little bit special, and this one just felt very standard. That being said, I know a lot of you out there are diehard fantasy fans that have read everything that is out there, everything that is popular, and if you're looking for something more under hype that you have not read yet and you love the tropes of the genre, this might be a perfect read for you, so keep that in mind. I just might not be the target audience for a book like this. It did everything it was trying to do very well, but it just was things I've seen before. And finally, I'm excited to announce that I'm actually reading through The Lord of the Rings. So I have read through The Fellowship of the Ring, which is a book I have tried to read many times. I believe this is my fourth attempt. I always read through the beginning, enjoyed it, and then The Hobbits went off and they met Tom Bombadil and I would DNF the book. This time I decided to push through. I did the audiobook, which several of you had recommended to me, and it worked out really well. I will admit this first book was still a struggle. I struggled a lot with Tom Bombadil as well as a lot of the songs and I'll admit that just like I was saying a moment ago I'm not always a fan of really classic tropey fantasy and so I'm surprised how much I like this one despite the fact that it is, you know, the classic and created all those tropes. But I am, of course, a huge fan of the movies. I love them, and so I've always wanted to go through the books. And I finally made it through this one. I'll say the second half, it definitely picks up, and the pacing gets a lot better, and I was definitely intrigued enough that I went back to back and continued on and read The Two Towers. This one worked a lot better for me, so for anyone that is kind of getting stuck in the first book, definitely keep going. I thought the pacing was really good. There were some great iconic moments, some conversations between the characters, especially the hobbits, that just pulled on my heartstrings. And I just found it had a lot of good suspense. I liked the elements of tracking and getting to see what the different parts of the fellowship were doing at that time. And for me, it actually gave a lot more backstory to the movies because 
I'll be honest, I was a teenager when I first watched them, and there were certain parts that I didn't always understand why they were in the story, I didn't understand how they were connected, and so reading the book you get a lot more of that backstory, that context, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'm currently reading The Return of the King as I record this. I'm just at the beginning. And so if you want to hear my final thoughts on this book and the trilogy, you're going to have to stick around for my next science fiction and fantasy wrap up. So I'll keep you posted on that. So that's it. We've made it to the end of the video here. I'd love to know of all the books I talked about. Are you planning on checking any of them out for yourself? Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, consider doing so. I do read science fiction, fantasy, horror, and thrillers. You can give this video a thumbs up and also share it around online. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.